Hello everyone! This video will be the start of a new series on World of Warships, the Epic Replay series. Epic Replays will contain battles in which solid gameplay is shown, which will lead to a good battle result of around 3000 base experience. In the current meta, you will only see battleships, cruisers and destroyers, as with those it is actually quite a challenge to reach this. Today I'm going to show you a battle on the Fubuki. The tier 8 Japanese destroyer, many consider to be quite an improvement after the Mutsuki and the Hatsuharu. When I started playing the ship, I was not totally convinced that this was the case. However, after some games, I have to say this ship is feeling more and more like a Minikaze on its steer. At least, if you know how to exploit everything on it. Okay, back to the battle you are watching. It is a battle on the day the Turpitz was released. I really did not want to play on this day, so this was around 2 o'clock in the night. Fortunately, matchmaking was kind to us and only a couple of Turpitzes were in the game. Not that Turpitz captains are bad, but some of them never played at tier 8 before and can do some surprising stuff. Together with my buddy Kursk, we are on Hotspot, and if you have checked the chat, I think the key to success in Hotspot is communication. Instead of forcing my will onto the team, I think a better approach is to ask in chat. Then confirm what somebody is choosing, and most of the times it will lead to a success. Now, the first feeling I had with everyone going to B was being sorry for the Cleveland in front of us. He took an aggressive approach and is being focused out really badly. Rest in pepperonis and thank you for your willingness to work together. I hope this battle did not deter you from working together in the future. While the Cleveland was totally helpless at this position, the Fubuki could be awesome here. With the correct crew skills, camouflage and equipment, you can get really close to the enemy without being spotted. Here I am greedy as hell, because all the enemy ships are driving together in some sort of a confined space. I get a little bit too close, but I am rewarded by being able to launch all of my torpedoes. I am using a large spread here, as there are many ships. This means that not only I have a small chance of hitting multiple targets, I am also pretty sure that almost all of them will be changing their courses. This will delay them and it will give my team the time to reposition themselves. Now I am not sure everybody noticed it, so I will retrace the steps I made when deploying that smoke screen. First of all, I used it. But right after I used it, I slowed down a little bit to make sure I do not pop out of it again. Some captains go full speed, and if you do that, you will be spotted multiple times. Later in this video, you will see the enemy sims doing that, and you will also see that result. After deploying the smoke screen, I make sure the closest enemy ship is between me and the smoke, and I can disengage properly. Many destroyer captains think that only torpedoes that hit are successful torpedoes. I have to disagree with that, and I will explain you why. At the beginning of the battle, the team decided that we all should go B. The best scenario for us would be to find half of the enemy team there. So with my second spread of torpedoes, I deny the enemy in front of us to go towards the east and force them to either rotate towards the middle or rotate back to B. To me, these kind of torpedoes are also successful. But what do you think about it? During the battle, I was talking to Kursk about all kinds of stuff. The coming patch, how awesome it would be to do a nice double, the YouTube channel and me streaming. You know, the usual having a chilled out time stuff. Although that's pretty fun, I totally did not notice that our team was losing badly. We already lost 4 ships, and the enemy lost only one of their turpices. Furthermore, we cannot cap C, we will most likely lose A, and well, there are 4 ships in front of us that are occupying cap B. 
best tactics ever. Now, that is something that is the direct result of our first decision. Going with the whole team to B. In domination mode, this could go wrong if you are not starting to make kills. So it is up to us to score some points quickly. As you could see, my third spread was again a wide spread. In this case, the enemy ships do have a large area to maneuver. If I would have used a small spread, they could easily dodge them all with a small correction of their course. With a large spread, you are more likely to hit, but you will just hit one or two of them. You also make sure the enemy cannot rotate that easily. By the way, if you want to know how to cycle between the different torpedoes or shells, after you have pressed Z, just press C. The enemy Cleveland is kind of greedy and makes a small lapse in judgment. One torpedo hits. And now you will be amazed. I'm gonna use my guns. Something I do not suggest doing unless really needed. Now, this does not really look like that situation, but what you do not hear is Kursk in his carrier telling me he is getting spotted. He needs to survive, as with him, we can still influence the outcome of the battle. With me using my guns, I will be spotted for a long time. The only way to disappear again is to use my smoke, and luckily for me it is back up. With almost perfect timing, the smoke pops and I can disengage. I am pretty happy with my performance and suddenly realize that I probably threw the game. Check the minimap, check the objectives and check my position. I cannot do anything in the corner of the map and I'm actually a bit disappointed in my own lack of situational awareness. I feel a lot of pressure now and I am not patient enough. As the Atlanta has almost no armor, I switch to AP and start firing while continuously dodging his shells. Finishing him off secures Kursk his safety and we can continue the battle. With being so focused on killing the Atlanta, I am quite surprised to see a Sims and Alba in my face. I am looking for teammates around me and here I realize how bad the situation we are in. We have 5 ships left, do not control any cap and will not be able to control any cap soon. Also we are 300 points behind. There is no time for me to be patient in my Fubuki and just rely on my torpedoes. Now I do not like if people are using teammates as distraction. I see my turpits is in trouble and again I am going to use my guns. That Sims could totally kill the battleship but he does stand a good chance against that Auba. So I am focusing on the destroyer. And remember earlier in this video? I talked about slowing down when using a smoke screen. This enemy sims does not do this and here you can see the result. He continuously pops out of the smoke and is quite an easy target. So I hope this helps you out if you are having problems with it. My shooting is pretty horrible here and I miss volley after volley. Luckily, the secondaries of the turpits are quite awesome. With the sims being dealt with and our cruiser coming down south, it is a 3 versus 1 now and the odds of the battle are slowly turning into our favor. We are still far behind, but there is hope. Now I'm gonna show you another trick in the destroyer book. Many players assume that if they see torpedoes coming, the enemy destroyer fired all of his torpedoes. Especially on the higher tiers, this can be confusing as you have many torpedoes in a single drop. 
So what I do here is denying the AUBA to rotate towards me with two volleys. I keep one volley and launch that in a small spread on the other side of the island. Of course, you are quite dependent on how focused the enemy is, but in a destroyer every small detail matters. As you can see, he is quite surprised and that was just what my team needed. Enemy cruiser sunk. Now there is no time to waste. We effectively have 4 ships left, of which only 2 are quite mobile. It is up to the cruiser and me to secure the different cap circles, as we are quite close to a loss. I really want to secure B, as this gives us much needed points, and while I'm capping, the enemy does not gain any points from B. The downside of this is that I'm broadcasting my position towards the enemy. Now, is it really a downside? If you are a destroyer and there is an enemy battleship driving towards you, well, he needs to pass through a choke point. Maybe you saw my video about the secret behind hitting torpedoes. If not, here is the link. But predicting the course of this battleship is quite easy. Again, our smoke screen came off cooldown at the exact moment I needed it. I was quite unlucky to get spotted for the second time, but on the other hand, I was quite lucky he only did a low amount of damage on me. The moment I think we finally have a break, a Mutsuki appears and he appears right in front of my buddy in the carrier. As I said earlier, I think Kursk could win us the game and it is my duty to keep him alive. So via team speak, I let him know I will find him and I will kill him. Now I am not totally sure, but I do think the enemy Mutsuki used his speed boost there. A speed boost is handy sometimes, but it also decreases your consumant range. Luckily for us, our battleship captain is awesome and he shows us how to wreck a destroyer. I do not know about you, but for me this battle still feels like a loss. We haven't been outside of this corner of the map during all of the battle and the only thing we did so far is making sure we did not lose. Then suddenly our cruiser reminds me that we can still win this battle. We have to have the right mentality and just do it. We communicate again and I ask him to go to C while I will try to delay the enemy in the middle. My buddy in the carrier does an awesome job here. He uses his fighters to do some recon in the middle, so I am not totally surprised by what is coming. With the information he provides, I can set up for one of the things I love doing most in the game. As the Iowa is pretty effective against planes, Kursk and I make a plan. He will try to kill off the turpets, while I will try to focus on the Iowa. I do think I drew the shorter straw here, but at the moment we do not have many choices. The torpedo bombers do not let us down and the torpedoes is out of the equation. Now I only have to somehow deal with a full health tier 9 battleship. Key to my success will be predicting where the Iowa will rotate to and I need to finish them off completely as I do not have any smokes left. Yeah, this will be an easy job. Surprise, motherfucker! Well, I always wanted to use that sentence in a video, and I think that scene was well suited for it. With that being said, the battle is not over yet. We did just sank the Iowa, but I need to survive here. I deliberately did not use my guns, as that will lower my consumers for quite a while. My only objective now is to run away as fast as I can. I wait with my repair until I get set on fire and my engine is down. 
I was not spotted anymore, so I thought I would be safe. Somehow the enemy cruiser does something amazing. He hits me after being unspotted for around 5 seconds. My engine is knocked out and man, I am glad I have last stand on my captain. I am slow, but I still cannot run those cruisers. With only a couple of minutes left, this is an incredibly close game. Until the moment our battleship does something awesome. He finishes off a cruiser and now we secure the win. I do want to give a shout out to Kursk, Missouri and Knornase. Thank you so much for that game and that awesome teamwork. You make me realize once again this community can be awesome and there definitely can be teamwork in a random game. With only one cruiser left, I make sure he cannot get to my teammate in the cruiser and I use three large spreads to deny him passage. He still insists and well, that happens if you do that. Now I do not have many games with more than 3000 experience. They do happen, but just not that much. If you have an epic replay you want to share with the rest of the community feel free to send it to me via an email. The email address is in the video description. I hope you appreciated the video and if you did, you help me out by sharing it. Thank you so much and here are the results. See you on the high seas.